This is Brother Kosh Kuala coming back at you with another lesson, giving all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Chakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders, great millstone, the rule and teach well. Peace out, salutation to the elect 144 first fruit. All right, so this is going to be uh, actually another add on to a series that I had going a few years back. It was called Let's Take a Look Into It. Uh, this is going to be uh, installment number 18 of that series. I have a playlist on my, on I think on my homepage of my YouTube. If you want to check that playlist out, I just look into different things, different little, um, not little, but different facts and, and stuff in the Bible. And also, you know, just different things to look into. That's why I named it this. So pretty much in this series, I give a synopsis to give you a ground, you know, a foundation to start, and then you can study more into it. So this will be installment number 18. I'm going to start this series back up. And what we're going in today is the bat the Battle of Beth Horon. All right, Battle of Beth Horon or Betharon, whichever way you want to call it. Uh, some of the um, historians call it the Battle of Beth uh, of Beth uh, uh, Seron. All right, because Seron it was the the general, the um, the Syr the Syrian general that came up against Judas in the Maccabean forces. So without further ado, I'm gonna jump into First Maccabees three, and I'm gonna start at verse thirteen. I'm skipping a previous battle, which I may go back and do a lesson on that, and I'm gonna go and do a battle. After the battle that we're going to, you know, get the uh, synopsis of today. So verse 13, it says, Now when Siron, or Siron, a prince of the army of Syria, uh, heard say that Judas had gathered unto him a multitude and a company of the faithful to go out with him to war, he said, I will get me a name and honor in the kingdom. Now, the reason why I say on saying these certain things in that case is because uh, when you read First Maccabees, you're really starting around the second chapter, about like the 40th verse was really the start of the Maccabean War. And the Maccabean brothers were pretty much wrecking shop and making a name for themselves. And that's the reason he said, I'm going to go you know, make a name for myself and get honored by beating this this individual and, and subduing the Israelites because the Israelites were a thorn in the side of uh, the Seleucid army. OK, and uh, just just to uh, bring that to light, I'm going to go down to verse 29 in this chapter. And it says, uh, nevertheless, when he saw that the money of his treasures failed and that the tributes in the country were small because of the, of the des dissension and, and plague which he had brought upon the land and taken away the laws which he had been of uh, old time. And this is speaking about Antiochus or Epiphanes IV, okay, which is spoken about. He's mentioned in the first chapter of this book. But pretty much that verse right there shows economic collapse. So the he because he was fighting multiple fronts because you got to understand this was during the time of the Sixth Syrian War. So this is between 170 and 168 BC. The Maccabean War started in 166 BC. All right. Uh, so the, the Battle of Beth Haron was in 166 BC, which I'm gonna get the dates here in a second in the Wikipedia. But this was the inception of what you know historians call the Jew the the Maccabean revolt or the Judean revolt. <laughs> okay. Uh bear with me one moment. I'm gonna go get a swig of water. One second. So lock you. Salat Yakim. I'm back. I had to get a swig of water and catch a breath. But this was the inception of the Maccabean Revolt or the, the Maccabean War. 
Now, in, in the inception of this war, the Seleucid Empire ran by um, Epiphanes and Antiochus IV um, were in the midst of the Sixth Syrian War, which is what which was the sixth war between the Ptolemaic Empire and the Seleucid Empire. So he's fighting two different fronts. He's fighting one in 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 you know in Judea, the land of Israel, and he's fighting the front over in the northern part region of Africa. Okay? So he stretched thin. That's what the Maccabeans did. They they crippled them. So that's another reason why he said, I'm gonna get honor. It says, for I will fight, back to verse 14, for I will fight, like it, for I will go fight with Judas and them that are with him who despise the king's commandment. Right. And the king's commandment was from Antiochus who told them not to keep their law, statutes, and commandments, which we clearly just read down in the 29th verse. Okay. So verse 15, it says, so he made him ready to go up and there went with him a mighty host of ungodly of the ungodly to help him and to be avenged of the children of Israel. All right. So lucky. And when he came near to the going up of Beth Haran, Judas went forth to meet him with a small company. Right? Because whenever you read about the wars that Israel went through, a lot of the time he was fought with a small company or one or two men. You know, uh, Israel went up to fight against the Philistines with Goliath and only one man put that entire entire host to, to shame, really, and put him to flight, which was David. And then, of course, you had Samson, uh, uh, Jephthah, you know, but he had a, Jephthah had a host, but you had Gideon, Abraham, or Abram at the time. Who fought with about, I want to say like 314 men. Gideon was with 300. You know. And you have Judas here with the small company. So verse 17 it says, Who when they saw the hosts coming to meet them said unto Judas, How shall we be able, being so few, to fight against so great a multitude and so strong, seeing we are ready to faint with fasting all this day? Verse 18, and unto, unto whom Judas answered, it is no hard matter for many to be shut up in the hands of a few. And with the most high of heaven, it is all one to deliver with a great multitude or a small company. For the victory of battle standeth not in the multitude of the host, but strength cometh from heaven. See, uh, even with, you know, Elisha and Elijah, you know, bringing fire down from heaven, um, uh, also, uh, disconfitting the whole, you know, whole army. These things, the the strength that Israel gets comes from heaven. Okay. So I'm gonna stop right here and go into the Wikipedia Battle of Beth Haron, 166 BC. So it says the Battle of Beth Haron or Battle of Siron, or Siron, which was that that prince, the general, that army coming against. Judas Maccabees trying to make a name for himself. Right? So it says, was was fought in some time between spring of six uh 166 BC and spring 165 BC. Right. So this is kind of around during the time of the Passover, you know, because probably it was during early the early, you know, stages of it. And usually springtime is the time where war really happens. It says during the Maccabean revolt between Jude Judean rebels led by Judas Maccabeus and an army of the Seleucid Empire under the command of Saron, the commander of the Syrian army. So Beth Haron or Beth Aron was a strate strategic mountain pass leading from the coastal plain to the Judean hill. Utilizing guerrilla warfare tactics because you have to use those things. Well, he had to use those type of tactics. First off, because he he knew the land. Second off, he was working with a small host, which is understandable. Why would you go toe to toe with the big army? Of course, you use tactics. You know, 
It says the Judean rebels ambushed and passed the passing Seleucid forces from the pass, pursuing the surprised and fleeing remnants into the plain. So, yeah, the same from the mountain pass. So that brings up the Judean mountains. So this gives a geographical sense of where the fight kind of took place. So if you see here, it was around this area. All right. All the way to the coastal plains area. OK, so around this area was the Judean mountains where it was fought. And uh, matter of fact, I'm going to go click on this a mountain pass and what it or what it kind of looks like. A mountain pass is, is a trail. Uh, usually a mountain pass was was made by a volcano or something in that sense or just simply from, you know, erosion and things of that nature. It ended up becoming a trail or a pass. So this was kind of the scenery of where it was fought. Now you can imagine with Judean forces knowing the um, the geography of you know you know Ju you know the land of Israel, they can make advances and, and have advantages over a larger army and using guerrilla uh, warfare tactics. They can what you call in boxing, they can stick and move. So they're very they're probably very swift on their feet and very agile to the point where they can take out a lot of men, you know, and retreat back to a certain position and prepare to attack again. Um, it's almost kind of like hornets. You go into a hornet's nest, a hornet's nest, yes, they will attack you, but they're coming at different angles, okay? Uh, and that's pretty much how they, they fought and, and, and succeeded against uh, the ungodly, these heathens coming up against them. All right, so let's go back to the scriptures. So it says, verse uh, 20, it says, they come against us in much pride and uh, iniquity to destroy us. Now we all know what the scriptures say about pride. Pride comes before destruction. That's exactly what happened. It says, and our wives and children and to spoil us, but we fight for our lives and our laws. Wherefore, the Lord himself will overthrow them before our face and as for you, be not afraid of them. Right. Because we know what it says in the book of Joshua, which I'm just going to go ahead and grab real quick. So we, uh, you know, he was pretty much telling them not to be afraid of them. All right. So this is the book of Joshua. Verse nine, Joshua one and nine. Have I not commanded thee be strong and of good courage? Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord of thy power is with thee whithersoever thou goest. Right. So that's what he was telling his people. We fight for our laws and we are not to be afraid of these heathens. All right. That goes back to when uh, King David was talking to the children of Israel. If I can just stumble up upon it real quick, maybe I'll get it one second. And I'll find it better in my scripts. Okay. I want to say it's like 18 or something, but we'll see. Uh, first Samuel. I want to say like 17 or something. Yeah, first Samuel 17. That's what I thought. First Samuel 17. And. Um, Twenty six. So it says in, in 1 Samuel 17, 26, And David spake unto the men that stood by and saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth the Philistine and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that should defy the armies of the living power? So that's the same energy that Judas Maccabees was coming with. It's like, don't be afraid of these cats because we are power, power coming from heaven. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, I'm going to keep going. With David, because David was talking his stuff, man. Uh, verse 45, it says, This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. Because David understood his power came from up high. It says, And I will smite thee, and take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the, ho uh, of the host of the Philistine this day unto the fowls of the air, and the wild beasts of the earth, that the earth may know that there is a power in Israel. So it's the same thing and the same energy that Judas Maccabeus was coming in to, you know, give a pep talk to his people to get some morale. Verse 23 says, now, as soon as he had left off speaking, he leapt suddenly upon them, 
Right, which goes back to what it was saying here. It was a quick ambush, okay? And it says, and uh, he leapt suddenly upon them. And so Saron and his host was overthrown before him. And they pursued them from the going down of Beth Haran unto the plain where they slayed a, a, about 800 men of them. And uh, the residue fled into the plains of the Philistines. You see that? So that's exactly what happened. So the, the Bible solidifies what the information that we're getting here. This doesn't solidify the Bible. All right. We always run everything through the scripts, you know, filter everything. So, yeah. So they pursued them down to the to the plains of the um, the Philistines. So pretty much what they did was beat their ass. <laughs> so it says the Jewish army had earlier won a battle in the accent of Lebanon, which I'm going to get into because really what they're speaking about is from verse 1 to like 12 right there, which I may, I'll do a lesson on that and let that be another installment of let's look into it. But it, that was against Apollonius. But really, uh, I, I think, don't quote me, I'm going to get into it in that lesson. He took Apollonius' sword um, uh, from him that day. Um, yeah, he took Apollonius' sword in that in that victory. So I'm, I'll get into that battle. And then it says another force was soon sent against Maccabeus, which led to the Battle of um, Emmaus, if I'm saying that correctly, which I'll get into this battle as well. That's spoken of in uh, the next chapter, uh, 1 Maccabees, the fourth chapter. So this is a synopsis of the Battle of Beth Heron. Um, Y'all can keep do a deeper look into it and get some more dates. Look up who Saron is. Look up who Judas Maccabee is and their tactics of war during this battle. So Lord willing, this was edifying. I want to give all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Dash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone to rule and teach well. Peace of salutation to the elect 144 first fruit. So, Brother Couch Quan, until the next time, uh, Shalom. And like always, uh, repent for you. How is coming back sooner than what me and you believe? Shalom.